After five weeks of entertaining and competitive action, the Overwatch League's first tournament of the year, the Kickoff Clash, concluded this past weekend. And boy, what a brilliant tournament it's been! Today, therefore, I wanted to discuss a few of my key talking points from this past week of competition, highlighting the teams and issues that I think deserve the greatest attention. Of course, for me, I can't start anywhere other than the Seoul Dynasty picking up their first trophies in Overwatch League organisation. It's been a rough four and a bit years as a Seoul fan, but Dynasty's own name has always seemed to add that little bit of extra pressure on every player of every squad, given the legacy that the team was founded on pre-Overwatch League. Whilst there's been some close moments, Seoul, like Philly, have gained a reputation for not living up to their potential, and for failing at the final hurdle. I mean, who can forget that tragic 4-3 reverse sweep defeat to the Dragons in the 2020 May Melee? For my money, the worst Overwatch League collapse we've ever seen. Heading into this year, there was no doubt in my mind that the Dynasty had the players capable of winning a trophy. I mean, they added one of the game's best ever tanks and Smurf to the GOAT of Overwatch profit. The first two weeks in APAC, however, told a typical story, with Seoul being a bit inconsistent in their overall performance, with Week 1 especially looking quite shaky, as Smurf struggled on Zarya, whilst the unexplainable decision to run Sombra also cost them greatly. This is where, first and foremost, I have to give Toby an incredible amount of credit as the head coach, as nearly all of these errors were eradicated heading into the tournament itself. Toby is one of my favourite ever players. One of the Dynasty jerseys I own is from his last year playing on the team. But even I had my concerns when he was made head coach, given his lack of coaching experience, and I think the criticism I've given him and the team at points this season has been warranted. That said, the way they rebounded from an early upper bracket exit to Shanghai only furthers how much praise I can offer, as most of these mistakes were quickly corrected, which led to a fantastic display in three back-to-back -back matches. In my point of view, had Seoul better managed their ult and coordination, they could have easily beaten the Dragons 3-1 during their first encounter in that upper bracket, with a map win on New Queen Street, and their inability to adapt to Shanghai's Rhine Rush was frustrating to see. It was therefore very symbolic to me that during their 3-2 revenge in the rematch, Seoul advanced with a 100-0 win on Idios Ruins, using that very same Rush Rhine comp. As for the final, what should have been a very tense encounter between two teams desperate for their first ever win was in fact for me the most one-sided final we've ever seen in the Overwatch League, which at no point ever felt entirely close at all. A poorly coached team doesn't do that, so that's why I have to give a ton of credit to Toby and the rest of the coaching staff. At the same time, however, every player on the Dynasty was phenomenal this tournament, and if it wasn't for each player playing at their very best, Seoul's trophy journey could have so easily ended in that second series against the Dragons. The dive executed between Smurf on Winston and Prophet on Tracer is about as good as you're going to see at the Overwatch League level, with both of these veterans again somehow raising their level of play to an incredible level when everything was on the line. I mean, if it wasn't for a number of clutch plays from Prophet alone, we wouldn't be discussing a Dynasty win today. That second round on Ilios was ridiculous, and only further cements in my mind the fact that he is the clear goat of Overwatch, if we're going to have to pick someone. Aside from these two, I also have to recognise the other starters as well. Fitz last weekend massively improved after what was a slow start to the season, with his level of play feeling much more like what we've become accustomed to in recent years. Then we have the support line with Creative and Vindame both making themselves critical to the team's success. Creative just seems to flourish on Ana as we've seen in the past, and this year, Seoul's support position as a whole has felt far more balanced, with Vindame a key part of that. On Lucio and Brick, he's almost been faultless, and has shown an exemplary ability to not only join Smurf and Prophet on aggressive dives, but also when needed, peel for Creative, and give him that backline support. The number of times we saw Creative nano the Brick to keep the pair alive and shut down backline dives just shows how effective the pair have been able to play around each other, with the support line proving to be one of Seoul's greatest strengths this season, rather than the weak link that many of us were concerned they might be. I could keep going with my praise for this team, but we might be here all day if I do. So what I will say is I hope this marks the foundation for this team to go forward from. The journey to a first trophy has been a long and difficult one, but not only have the Dynasty shown that they are capable of winning one, but they should now be thinking about being right in the mix of the next tournament as well. Being the only Apex team to have beaten every other East Region opponent at least once, they will be hoping for more consistent displays and success as the season progresses. Whilst it was ecstasy and victory for Seoul, in my second talking point, we must also acknowledge that this defeat was a heavy one for Philadelphia and their fans. This team has now made the final on five separate occasions and has finished as runner-up every single time. But with convincing wins over the East Region's top two seeds in the Spark and Dragons, this tournament almost felt like the destined moment where Philly would finally overcome their demons and at last be able to raise the winner's trophy. In that respect, it was cruel on the fusion that the team they had to face in the kickoff clash final was perhaps the only opponent that truly has their number in the dynasty, with their two matches this tournament aggregating out to 7-0 in Seoul's favour.
I genuinely believe that had Soul and Prophet not clutched out that map 5 against Shanghai in the losers final earlier that day, and had the Dragons face Philly in the final, today we would be discussing how the Fusion had succeeded in winning their first ever tournament, such has been the rock paper scissors nature of APAC team so far this season. Whilst there is obviously some fun in bringing up the Philly second place memes, I actually want to look at the positives of the Fusion that come out from this tournament, as there are actually quite a lot. Most importantly, this tournament was a great learning experience for this Philly side, especially given the number of rookies on their roster, with everyone showing a lot of development in the past week. Zest and MM3 have put in some really strong performances to offer the Fusion much greater balance on the DPS line, with Carpe no longer having to put the team on his back, whilst also giving Philly greater flexibility in terms of picking the best combination of players depending upon the map and composition they want to run, which will only benefit them moving forward. In the final, I would have liked to have seen Fury come in to play some Zarya, but I don't want to discredit the displays of Bellas Rhea at all, as he has impressed me quite a bit with his Winston play. Outside of the Smurf matchup, he hasn't struggled at all, and has arguably had the greater impact against his opposite numbers when faced with quality opposition like Fates, Gushu and Banar. Then there's the support line of Fixer and Aim God, that have also been incredibly solid, and much better than many, including myself, expected, especially when most highlighted this position is the Fusion's weakest point, and the area that would hold them back. I guess the point I'm trying to get across here is that although the result was a very painful one for Philly and their fans, if we're being honest with ourselves, very few people would have predicted them looking this good or getting as far as they did in this tournament after what was a very rough second week, so there definitely should be a lot of hope here, as with this team I'm confident they'll eventually get that first taste of victory. Shifting our focus now to NA and the West Region Final, after the victory on Sunday, the LA Gladiators are in my mind quite clearly not only the best team in NA, but I think the world right now. Throughout this tournament, the Gladiators have pretty much been perfect and haven't once faltered, something that becomes very noteworthy when looking at how the other top teams like the Shock faltered around them. Thinking back to their qualifiers, if not for two self-inflicted collapses to the Shock and Fuel, it is very possible that the Gladiators would have a perfect 10-0 record including both the qualifiers and the kickoff clash itself, absolutely decimating all the competition they faced in NA and dominating the first tournament of the year. The key reason why I believe they've been so good is because they've been the most balanced and adaptable of all the top teams so far this season. Not only has every player contributed evenly towards their success, but the Gladiators have shown that they are able to win on pretty much every tank comp, utilising whichever style best suits the map or best plays in the team they're facing, which we saw culminate in that clinical 4-0 sweep of the Dallas Fuel in the final. In terms of the players themselves, the first player I want to give a special focus on is Patty Van, who has brilliantly battled through some early adversity this season. After a rough first two weeks, it would be fair to say that a lot of people were very critical of Patty and his overall level of play, with some stating he was overrated. What we've seen since then though has been a remarkable turnaround, with Patty and Kevster combining in a deadly DPS tro that also includes arms on occasional subins. And through his improved displays, it's great to see Patty Pan finally living up to that potential that has been present since he burst onto the scene as a 14 year old. In retrospect, it's not at all surprising that he struggled out the gate, given he still only recently switched back to Overwatch as his main game. But his reaction on stage after winning the kickoff clash showed the emotion of someone who absolutely loves this game and has given so much in choosing to follow his dreams and return to join the league. It's brilliant to see, and I also hope it shines a spotlight on the Southeast Asia region of the Overwatch fanbase, which has been missing a star player since the departure of Mickey. Aside from Patty, another rookie on this team also needs a spotlight, and that is Reiner, who has been marvellous so far this year. Was flexibility the primary reason why LA have been so successful in their adaptations across a number of different styles? If Reiner hadn't been as excellent as he's been on Winston, Rhine or Doom, the Gladiators wouldn't have felt nearly as comfortable as they've been so far this year, especially given the fact that they don't have to make a sub to do this, which has given them a significant advantage over sides like Dallas or Atlanta, who seem to telegraph their tank plays depending on which tank is in. He's been a significant upgrade at this position for, compared to what they had last year, which was one they struggled with. And likewise, the play of Funny Astro has been a very noticeable improvement, with his aggressive Lucio suiting the Gladiators far more than what they had with Moth last year. With the team support line this year of Funny Astro, Shu and Skewed arguably being the strongest and most well-rounded group in the league. There's not much more to say about the Gladiators really, as long as they can continue to consistently play up to this level of play and eliminate some of the self-inflicted errors that occasionally crept into their displays, I think there's a chance they could dominate North America this year in particular given how flexible they've looked so far, which has set them up brilliantly for if the meta ever changes. The fourth talking point that I thought needed a mention after watching the kickoff clash was something that during his co-stream, ATP and I had similar opinions on, and that's how fantastic the vast majority of rookies have been so far this season. I don't remember there ever being a rookie class full of this much talent that has excelled so quickly out of the gate, 
And here we're talking about across most teams in the league. Of course, each of the very top teams has seen impactful and impressive debut tournaments from their rookies. I mean, I've already mentioned the rookies across Philly, Vin Dame on Sol, as well as Patty Pan and Ryder on the Gladiators. But then there's also Chio on the Fuel, the rookies that make up most of the shock, Venom, Ultraviolet and OG on the Rain. And that's still looking at just the top few teams in each region. I could also hide someone, for instance, and Majid on Florida. Whether it's just the subtle differences with 5v5, or the fact that Overwatch 2 is technically a new game for all the players involved, most of the rookies have really made awesome starts, impressively across all roles as well, with the support positions both flex and main seeing quite a remarkable influx of new talent. At this stage, who the rookie of the year is arguably the hardest question you can ask right now, with there being just so many valid options and choices, and this makes me incredibly excited to see how they'll all progress throughout the rest of the season. As so far, there's some players in this group that certainly had the makings to go on and become role stars, which is not only excellent for us as viewers this year, but bodes very well for the health of the league as a whole moving forward. The last area I want to discuss is something I don't want to spend too much time on, but I do think does merit some debate and discussion, and that is the presentation of the league in a few areas. This is quite a broad scope, but one avenue I want to discuss is in regards to LAN events. I thought the Dallas event looked amazing, with the live crowd reactions adding so much to some of the moments and matches we watched throughout the weekend. It also makes me wish we had something similar in APAC this time round, as can you imagine how much more amazing those Seoul Shanghai series would have been with a crowd watching live? Some more LAN events please Overwatch League. Everyone we've seen so far I think has been a fantastic success. On a more negative note, I think we all appreciate that the Overwatch 2 build the pros are playing on is a beta, but the quicker we can get these visual bugs fixed by the devs, the better, as those push maps, whilst top level entertainment, would have been so much bigger moments had the correct graphic been shown, and there not been a bug. And come the end of the season, with the league being one of the only ways to watch Overwatch 2, that's the sort of thing we want to be seeing less of. Also lastly, from a selfish point of view, I hope the league keeps taking feedback on co-streams. I've had a brilliant time on ATP's co-stream over the weekend, but for co-streaming to really make the same impact as it has in other games, I still think some changes need to be made to the rules. I understand that some of that may be a contractual thing, but just as they add in more dates, I'm hopeful the league can be practical and pragmatic, because at the end of the day, we all just want the league to be the best it can be. But on that note, that's where I'm going to leave it today. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And be sure to check out my upcoming Overwatch League team grades for the kickoff flash tournament that I hope to have out in the next few days. Until next time though, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.